Hey everyone, and welcome to another round of Sprout Sessions. We hope that you've been learning so much this week and that you're finding actionable insights to implement into your own social media strategies. Uh, before we get started here with Katie from Tito's Vodka, which is gonna be awesome, I know, I just want to cover a few housekeeping items. So this presentation will be a little bit different than the rest of our Sprout Sessions. Unfortunately, Katie had a last minute conflict, so she couldn't make it live. Uh, so we actually did this session pre-recorded. What does that mean for you? Not a whole lot, really. We'll just change the way that we conduct the Q&A. So instead of having a live one following the presentation like we've been doing, Katie has actually offered to answer any of your questions this evening and tomorrow via social. You can tweet her at Tito's Katie, that's spelled K-A-T-Y, um, directly, and she can answer your questions. You can always tweet us here at Sprout Social, too, and we're happy to help you out. Additionally, uh, we encourage all of you to still engage with us and your fellow social professionals by tweeting at Sprout Social or using the hashtag Sprout Sessions throughout the presentation. This, uh, this recording will be uploaded to our YouTube page afterwards, so you can always access it afterwards and it'll live on there forever. So anytime you want to refer back to it, feel free to. So with that, I'm so excited to pass it over to Katie Gelhausen from Tito's Vodka, and I'll let Katie take it from here. Katie, go ahead. Awesome. Thanks for that intro. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Katie Gelhausen, um, and I manage uh, social media for Tito's Handmade Vodka, uh, headquartered down here in Austin, Texas. Um, and today we're going to discuss uh, how creating and implementing social guidelines for your brand can actually feel quite freeing rather than constricting content and engaging with when you're con engaging with consumers online. Um, so rather than feeling uh, confined within a box, um, creating social guidelines, that once you have them in place, it can actually feel quite liberating and open up even more possibilities for your brand. Um, first and foremost, um, particularly for any of those of us in a regulated industry, um, you want to have a clear understanding of what's legal and what's not legal in your industry. Um, I'd say that one of the first things you want to do is just meet with your legal team to go ahead and understand what laws are in place, especially when it comes to advertising. Um, you want to make sure that you also look to whoever the regulating body is in your industry. And um, for us in the spirits industry, it's DISCUS, the Dis Distilled Spirits Council of the United States. Um, it's very likely that platforms and new opportunities are going to continue to move faster than the laws and regulations can keep up with them. So there's probably going to be quite a bit of gray area. That's why it's important to understand upfront what your limitations are and understanding what they mean at their base in order to be able to apply it when the next platform or opportunity rolls around. Um, reading up and becoming well-versed in the laws and regulations um, will help you determine when an opportunity comes across your desk, if it's going to be a fit for your brand or not, or if it even makes sense for you to engage in that. By defining what you can and can't post up front, it's going to open even more doors than you might think. Um, you have to know also where you're allowed to be, um, what platforms you can operate on, what you can post, and who you can engage with. Um, for any brand in the alcohol industry, the first one that comes to mind is age. Um, we all know that the drinking age in uh, the United States is 21, and um, that changes elsewhere around the world. So you're just going to make sure that if you're operating on a platform that either the laws are universal across the world or that there's a way built in for it to kind of handle each different country and whatever those laws and regulations might be. Um, in the alcohol industry, we can't have a profile on a platform unless 71.6% of the user base is of age. Um, this kind of information is not necessarily readily available for our industry, so that means you might need to do some additional legwork in order to uh, and research before you just decide that you can jump on the next social platform. Um, once you've determined that you can be on the platform, you're going to want to make sure that your profile is set up exactly like it needs to be. Um, nowadays, a lot of platforms, especially like Facebook and Twitter, um, for our industry in particular, they have an age gate in place, and that's going to prevent anybody from being able to follow even if they, if they aren't 21. Um, which also gives us permission to engage back and forth. Um, Facebook just pulls this right from your profile, and Twitter will ask you before you go and follow um, somebody within this industry. Um, but as an extra precaution, it's become quite standard pra practice in our industry to include a disclaimer like, must be a legal age to follow in your bio. So you'll find this in all of our bios across every platform, um, just as an extra safeguard to make sure that everybody who's following knows and agrees that they are of age. Um, but however, we caution you because there are still ways around this. Um, regulations may already be in place for your industry, like age gating, but they might not be universally, universally available across every platform, um, nor are they going to be the same in every country. So just make sure that you're keeping in mind that um, there are ways around it and people can be sneaky and do some other things to get around it. 
Um, we personally treat it like any bartender or bouncer does when somebody walks into a bar to order a drink, um, if that looks like they're under 30. Proceed with caution um, and do what you can to find out if somebody is worth engaging with. Um, we usually tend to play it safe versus sorry, um, but depending on who your brand is and what industry you're in, you might have a little bit more leeway there. Um, so then once you get all your profiles set up and kind of understand just what's legal and what's not legal, where you can operate, who you can talk to, um, the next step, and this is a big one, um, is to define who you are. Um, so you need to have a clear understanding of who your brand is and what voice you're going to use to tell your story. Asking the basic questions like who, what, when, where, and how will help define who you are as a brand on social. Um, one of the first steps of this is who are you? What is your voice? Um, that will help kind of determine what sort of content you're going to be posting. Um, and you may not know all the answers right away, but that's totally okay. Just keep all these questions in mind as you come across new opportunities um, and kind of keep track of how you're handling those opportunities and situations. And as long as you have a sense of who you are, that's going to always be your guiding light to knowing if the opportunity is right or not. And sometimes an opportunity might not be right right away, but down the road it might make sense again. So just kind of keep those in mind as you um, come across new platforms and opportunities. Um, but you'll also want to leave room to adapt for what your fans are asking for. You know, you might get on there first and start posting one kind of content and realize that your fans are asking for something else. Um, just be willing to be flexible and pay attention to what your fans um, are loving and asking for. Um, for us at Tito's, um, we represent one product, Tito's Handmade Vodka, and the one man who started it all, Tito Beverage. And yes, that's his real name. Um, everything we do, whether it's online or off, is an extension of this man and his story and the company that he spent the past 20 years building. Um, one of the next questions you'll want to ask is who are you trying to reach? Who's your target audience? Um, as Tito likes to say, if you have a liver, we deliver. But in the marketing office, we like to add as long as you're of age. Um, this means that the content that we're sharing is you know, some of our favorite tips and tricks from around our office, from around our team, um, recipes that we get sent in from consumers, photos that we get sent in from consumers, um, any and all of it, we love it um, as long as you're of age. Um, understanding who we are and who we wanted to be on social has meant that we've been able to adapt and keep up in a way that's been totally comfortable to us throughout all the crazy changes that have come on social, especially in the past few years. Um, because we've been representing the same product and the same guy for 20 years, we've been able to stick to that pretty closely. Um, another question you're going to want to ask yourself is what are you trying to accomplish through social? Um, here at Tito's, one of our guiding lights and um, Tito-isms, if you will, um, is we are all made of stardust and it wants us to do good. And um, this is Tito's belief that we are all connected in the world and um, we are put on this earth to do more good. Um, and here at Tito's, we view vodka as the medium to do that. Um, and so there can be a lot of smaller goals that kind of lead back up to this overarching goal, but it's kind of a good idea to just kind of keep what is this overarching reason for you being on social in the first place? Um, is it to sell more of your product or is it to create a community around it? Um, whatever that um, goal is, just always keep that in mind and you're gonna, um, your content that you're putting out there is going to follow that as long as you keep that in mind. Um, so just look to the leaders in your company for that kind of wisdom um, and light on the inside. Um, and then you also need to think about what kinds of content are you going to engage with? Are you going to engage with content from your partners, from your consumers, from celebrities, um, or other high profile people? What about other brands? Um, just knowing kind of off the top, you might not know who's going to tweet at you, but just kind of knowing that if so-and-so were to tweet at you, would you be comfortable engaging with them or not? Um, keep in mind that anything that happens on social, especially for a brand, is all public. And even if you delete it, there's going to be a record of it somewhere. So just, you know, thinking, thinking about those questions up front will then make it not feel so panicky in the moment when something really amazing and wonderful does happen that somebody super big and wonderful tweets out at you, then you can know whether or not you're okay with engaging with it or not. Um, another big piece is customer service. Um, social media has become quite the tool for customer service. Um, it's how it gives fans, you know, direct access to the people behind the brand that they know and love um, and if they, that they have questions about. So know, you know, upfront if you're going to handle these customer service inquiries online or are you going to immediately take it offline. Um, we kind of do a mix here. But just kind of knowing how you're going to handle it before a situation arises will make it um, save you a lot of time and kind of be a crisis averter when an issue does arise. Um, next, what kinds of content are you going to post? Um, here at Tito's, we like to focus on brand education. 
um, events, lifestyle content, our merchandise, um, some of our favorite recipes, and also just a good old ridiculous Bloody Mary. Um, so then in addition to figuring out what kinds of content you're going to post, um, think about you know what pieces of content are you going to put paid support behind? How much money are you going to put behind it? What do you want your brand to look like online? Are you going to use the same filter for every Instagram post? Or are you going to use no filter? Or are you going to do all black and white? Are you going to keep them all the same stylistically or what? Um, thinking of those things before you get started is really going to help determine um, when something comes across your desk if it's going to be a fit or not for you. Um, also, understanding if you'll use platforms differently. Um, we use Facebook a lot to talk about our events, and Twitter is more of a customer service tool. Um, those just kind of how the platforms went for us, but thinking about those things in advance can kind of help you plan for that and knowing um, when you go to put your editorial calendar together, kind of where you're going to post where, what. Um, and knowing which pieces of your brand or product you are willing to talk about and share up front will not only help guide what kinds of content opportunities are out there, but it will help you fill your calendar too by making sure you're hitting each of those different points. Um, another big piece is timing. When are you going to post and how often? When are you not going to post? Um, these things include like time of day. Are you going to post in late at night or are you just going to be posting all day? Or hitting happy hour is a big one for us. Um, what holidays are you going to post around? Are you, you know, sticking with just the big ones? Or are you going to do every major random day, like National Popcorn Day or National Left-Handed Day? Um, and thirdly, what kind of big entertainment, cultural, or sporting events are you going to capitalize on? Knowing which events um, and names and moments make sense for your brand to join the conversation are equally as valuable as which ones that don't make sense. Um, and just also keep in mind that especially around some of those big cultural or sporting events like Super Bowl or Olympics, they are pretty strict on um, their trademarks around their name. So just make sure you keep in mind um, what you are allowed and what you aren't allowed to say in those moments. Um, also think about like, are there any times that you would want to avoid engaging with your consumers? Um, for us at Tito's, it's definitely a fine line. You know, we want to engage with people while they are out there enjoying our product, um, but that usually tends to focus on like happy hour. Uh, we usually, we cut off our social media. Yeah, just at that point, you know, we want you to be out there having fun and enjoying your life, and we want to enjoy our life. Um, and then just you know, usually it just kind of goes a little bit downhill after that. Not the best kind of content comes out then. So just knowing right up front when you are going to engage um, and when you want to cut that off. Um, and if you need to, determine when you need to hail your social media a cab for the night and send it on home. Um, and once you have a sense of who you are, it will help you recognize what kind of content you can and should post, and then also who you're comfortable engaging with. The last step would be training, training, training. Um, this includes educating <clears throat> not only you yourself about your brand, but also your employees and your partners on everything that you just discovered, from everything that you can talk about legally and not, um, to what kinds of content you're going to be posting and when. You know, sharing that information with everybody that you're going to be um, working with in the online space is very important just to make sure that you're all on the same page. Because <coughs> um, you're on social media to get more people connected and talking about you, so you want to be able to at least help guide those conversations um, when you can and when it does make sense by educating employees and partners on brand guidelines. Um, partner, you know, with partners, you're going to want to um, set those in place for your brand um, to connect the dots for how you want others talking or not talking about you on social. <coughs> if you're bringing on a new partner, um, there's going, there's probably going to be a social component to the relationship. So just make sure you're both on the same page before you even enter into the agreement. <clears throat> um, and this will help develop an open exchange between you and your partners, both online and off. Um, these partners can be your clients, your accounts, your events, philanthropies that you partner with, um, anybody that your brand works with and that you're going to have some sort of conversation going on on social. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, by arming your partner with the correct tools, both verbally and visually, you can help steer the conversation in the direction that you're comfortable with. <coughs> and this includes everything from proper brand name to which the handle you want tagged to the correct logo usage to the proper hashtag usage as well. Um, lastly, you're definitely going to want to train your employees. Not only are they your brand's biggest advocates, <coughs> so you'll want to inform them what kinds of content you'll be posting about, 
um, but also what you're looking for from them. Um, this slide is an example of a bunch of different user generated content that we actually got from our sales reps that are all around in the country. Um, you know, a couple winters ago, people have made a snowman out of our bottle, um, a Tito the snowman, um, or just infusions. And so by letting them know that these are the kinds of content that we continually post, then when they're out there, when they have a moment in their life, they share it, they know now to share it with us. And then these have been, these have ended up becoming some of our favorite um, posts and campaigns that we've ever run on social media. And it's fun that it's, you know, our sales reps feel a little bit more invested in that way because they're contributing to the content. And then it just, you know, continues that flow back and forth between our two teams within the same company. Um, and my team works very closely with all of the other teams in marketing as well as our like, entire sales force um, since we use social to highlight and amplify the philanthropic work that we're out doing in our markets. I want to talk about where you can come find us um, in real life and meet up with us. So much of what we post about actually comes from our fellow coworkers. And because of this, we've been training our employees on the regulations that we ourselves must adhere to. Um, this nips anything in the bud that we wouldn't be allowed to post about by kind of keeping that open dialogue and letting them know, hey, we can't post this because of X, Y, Z law or whatever that is. Um, but arming them with that knowledge also will then, you know, just kind of prevent anything that you can't post about from coming across your desk and just kind of keeping you all on the same page. Um, and part of that, we conduct regular trainings. Um, when our new employees are hired, they sign um, social guidelines um, as part of their employee contract. Um, they all come to Austin within the first year of being hired to do um, onboarding, and that includes more than just social media, but we have a dedicated session where we go over everything um, that I've been covering here. Um, and then again, we do reminder courses at any time our entire company gets together for national sales meeting. So just keep continually driving that same knowledge home um, and keep putting that information in front of them and then you can arm them with the tools that they know so that then when they go out, they know what opportunities to look for as well. Um, and also just make sure to make yourself available to your fellow coworkers to answer any questions. If you remain open for an open discussion, then they're gonna come to you before jumping on any opportunity. Um, and if you become the authority within your company on the social space, then they won't even think twice about doing something before coming to you. Um, it just keeps everything um, good to go. Um, just also remember, a word of warning, um, that employees are an extension of your brand online. Um, and knowing who someone works for, even from a private profile, like on Facebook, is only a few clicks away. Educate your employees up front with what is expected of them on social and what is to be avoided um, when they're hired, and then just continually conduct regular refreshers. Whether you're in a regulated industry or not, what your employees do or say on social can come back to haunt you. So keeping your employees up to date with what's expected of them will keep it from ever even becoming an issue. So developing and implementing a set of do's and don'ts for your brand on social will make it easier to make the big decisions in the moment. By understanding who you are and having a clear framework within which to be yourself, it will make it more obvious which opportunities you see as a green light and which are red. Um, while there will still be some gray areas, having the rules in place will make it easier to recognize those situations as they come up, and your do's and don'ts for your brand, your partners, and your employees will serve as your guiding light for the years to come. So in conclusion, don't forget to get with your legal team um, and whatever the governing body is in your industry. Um, take a hard, good look at who you are and who your brand voice is um, to get that all set up. And then don't forget to create do's and don'ts for your brand, your employees, and your partners, just to make sure that the conversations on social stay within the framework that you would like them to. Um, and thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was super that was helpful. Very helpful. Uh, giving us tools and insights on how to handle and encourage employees to be active on social. So uh, with that, that is a wrap for this session. Uh, though we don't have a Q&A here, again, you can feel free to ask Katie questions directly by tweeting her at Tito's Katie. And that's Katie spelled K-A-T-Y. You can also share any tips you learned from her with the hashtag Sprout Session. Um, again, and you can ask about any questions that you may have at Sprout Social, as always. Um, so we're going to compile some of the major takeaways from this session and share it with all of you afterwards. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled. And from all of us at Sprout, thanks so much and have a great summer.